this is going to be a quick overview of the Pi menu plugin. How to set up the widget and how to bind actions to it. So here we have a default top-down Unreal project. It's in the default state except that I have added a couple of actor blueprints just so we would be able to do something with our menu actions. So let's go. First to make sure, sure that the plugin is active. Make sure this checkbox is set. Perhaps you will have to restart the editor for this checkbox to have effect. And let's start. So this is a default project and it has no head-up display by default. So we will have to create one before we can continue. Just user widget. Framework. Okay. And we will need a overlay here. I will explain later why we need canvas on it. And let's put there some useless stuff just for testing purpose. Okay, canvas should fill all the screen. Save. Next thing we need to go to our player controller and actually activate our widget work and to viewport okay that's just a basic setup let's see yeah we have this useless button of ours everything works let's remove it so now to our pi menu let's go to the content browser let's navigate to the plugins and then to pi menu content if you don't see plugins folder here make sure you have show plugin content enabled because if it's not you can't access the plugin content okay so then we will take example json menu and copy it to our project let's call it just by menu like this and let's put it let's put it to our framework right we're gonna have it huge and we're gonna bind it to the bottom okay should do okay so this is uh, example menu so it has some content by default like this so let's see if it will show up yes it does show up okay and you can already see that it kind of works so basically we have installed our menu and the question is how to customize it right so the first thing we need to 
understand how we define menu items, icons and all that stuff, right? So this JSON describes the menu that is in the game right now. It's, let's see it again, it's two level menu, root menu, submenu 1, submenu 2 and column for whatever reason. And this is the JSON that generates this menu. Let's see it in some text editor. All right. So you have this root menu right on top. Then it has three submenu with content and three submenu empty. That works like this. So when we open menu, the whole circle is divided to, in our case, six segments, right? And three of them are missing. And one thing you need to understand here is that the sequence of menu items here goes from this point counterclockwise. So this is submenu 1, this is submenu 2, this is cone. Like this is submenu 1, this is submenu 2, this is cone. And then we have three empty segments here that are described in the JSON. If we, let's say, add one, so we have seven menu items paste here, compile, boom, you see that the whole circle is now broken not for the six parts, but for the seven parts. Still these lines work, all the submenus show, but the size of each segment decreased. Okay, the next thing here is the icons. As you can see, each menu item has icon attached. How do you define it? As you have probably noticed already in the JSON each icon, each menu item has icon X and icon Y. So what are this X and Y? Let's go to our hub and let's see the settings for our menu. You can see the icon gallery here and you can see icon pixels. Let's see. Icon gallery defines the icons that can be used in the menu. So each of this icon X icon Y points to some items in this gallery. And the size of each icon in the gallery it's supposed to be square so it's defined here if we set it say to 40 this the, the widget divides the available gallery for this size that we define here and cuts the icons so if we make it half it breaks and shows only half of the icon if we set it back to 80 everything is back and healthy so you can and you I guess should <laughs> because these icons are not really useful obviously so you s define here the texture to be used 
as an icon set and in the JSON you just describe which menu item uses which icon from this set and you can change it dynamically like when you create a dynamic menu you can choose whichever icon you want okay one more thing here to note in this json is rotation so each menu can be rotated our root menu after we have changed the number of items is now sort of asymmetrical right so we can fix it surely by changing rotation here so we need to rotate our let's see it we need to rotate our segments for half of this difference right so this is one seventh of the circle and we need a half of it so it will be one divide like this okay let's see oh no we have rotated in the wrong direction so yeah that's sort of important too the items go counterclockwise while rotation goes clockwise <laughs> sorry for that guys but that saves a couple of instructions in the shader so so let's go back to the editor minus minus well let's go see it mm, too much so we need not one 14 but 128 all right All right, now it's symmetrical. So that's how rota rotation works. Okay, let's add some action to our menu, right? Because that's, after all, what all of this is about. This is, as this is an example menu, it has some press it up action switch which we will actually use right so each menu item aside from title visuals rotation and etc has a field of action this means that this menu will trigger the action and the id of the action will be available so we can let's just make action for the first menu available right let's spawn actor room class let's use our bp boom so that would be sort of funny and get player pawn we will spawn a little 
Niagara effects before our character, right? Transform. We will take the location and we will forward vector. like three meters will be good enough, I guess. And location. So this should create a little Niagara blueprint, which is this blueprint boom before our character. Let's see if it will work. Boom. Yes, it works. So, and other menu items work as well, but they just don't have actual actions assigned. Uh, one thing to note is this, like if we open our menu and the player clicks somewhere, the menu stays where it was, right? So that's not how you would like your menu to behave, I guess. How do we fix this? We, we fix it like this we open our HUD framework and that's where our overlay comes in handy. We will put a border and we will put it first because Unreal dispatches events from down to top. So if the mouse click will hit our menu, this border will not see it as, as long as we capture it there. But if the user clicks outside our widget, this border, this border actually, will capture this event and we will collapse our menu on, on this. So we make this border transparent fully and we bind on mouse down an action we do not want to capture this clicks so we return unhandled anyway and we want our menu to collapse all menus. Okay, so this turns our project to something that looks sort of meaningful, right? So we open the menu and it closes as long as player clicks on the screen. All right, the only thing left is to look at our example project where some more advanced stuff is available. The demo project, which is based on third person template, it generally it's built the way that you have seen already. So it's more or less obvious but it has some stuff that's more advanced than we have just implemented and let's see how it works so we have this third menu this one which first of all has you should note that connection lines may be enabled or disabled like here 
there are no connection lines and here there are connection lines so you can control this but that's minor thing and the major thing here is let's open blueprint for this menu is that here we use a couple of quite of like complex techniques if we look at simple let's say the first menu in the graph you see this as there is a switch with as many outputs as we have commands in our menu description but you can guess that as long as you have complex menu this wouldn't be too handy right so perhaps you would want to make something a little bit more scalable that's the first thing the second thing is that creating menu from just json is useful but just to some extent as long as you have some dynamic items some items you want to show or hide you would use blueprint right like we did it in the second menu you can see that it's purely created by the blueprint but just one blueprint isn't good as well because if you have say 10 static items of your menu you could very well describe it with json and then like we did in this third menu so we use json to set up a bare bone menu and then we inject there the custom items via blueprint and this you can extend to whatever level you want and this item as you can see like here we just create a basic pi menu item describe action title whatever and it's just goes as is this one is not a basic pi menu item but a custom blueprint and if we look at this come on at this blueprint here it is blueprint custom menu item this menu item has its own on selected event so after you combine the menu from this blueprints you don't have to rely on the switch each of you menu items will know how to react so this one is let's see this is custom menu with exclamation let's see there there it is like here this is the one and it let's boom again boom so it works and it works through not through this because you don't have menu selected at all with this third menu but it works through this blueprint of the custom menu item so that's more or less it what you should know and do great games guys take care like subscribe bye bye